Hey everyone, Fez here from Crypto Setups. Today I'm going to show you a tutorial on Bucket Protocol, which is on the SWE network. Now, as always, not financial advice. These videos are strictly for educational purposes only. So, Bucket Protocol, which basically allows you to lock your SWE up and mint a stable coin called Buck. There's a whole other bunch of stuff that you can do with it. But what's really cool about it is there's a lot of yield to be earned if you know what you're doing. And today I'm going to take you through step by step of how to use the protocol, what everything means, that by the end of it, you feel confident, you know what you're doing and you're being safe while you're trying to leverage and do some DGEN activities. So let's dive in. Okay, so here's Bucket Protocol. As you can see, it's exactly as I said earlier, you can take SWE, ETH and a whole bunch of other LSTs that SWE has on their chain and use it to mint uh, the stablecoin known as Buck. Here's the actual protocol. Now, before you get started, uh, I'll go through each of the sections, but what you'll notice in the overview page where you land before you connect on your wallet, it's telling you a bunch of information. You can see the total value locked here how much liquidity the Buck stablecoin has, uh, the circulation, uh, currently in circulation. And if you hover, you can see kind of extra information, how much collateral, this is how much is actually uh, a collateral is backing up uh, the stablecoin Buck. But the market, so this is where it gets a little bit different. So you can see over here, we've got various SWE LSTs, and then you can also use just SWE or other tokens to mint the stablecoin buck. Now, what you'll also pick up is, hang on, so you can use these and there's an 113 APR 99. What does this mean? So I'm going to show you today in this tutorial. Some other little things to look at is each of these have limits, how much buck they can mint. You can see uh, most of these are nowhere close to their allocated limit. In this case, I'm going to focus on HA SWE and you can see over here it's got 1.5 million cap, which it hasn't hit. Over here, the collateralized ratio. So this is showing you that actually for how much uh, buck has been minted over here, there's 491% of collateral locked in order to mint that, which is quite high, which is good. Uh, and I'll break that down in a moment too. So a few things you should note. There is a one-off mint fee. So every time you go and mint, uh, you will pay a 0.5% mint fee of the total value. And then you continue to pay interest while you have a loan. So because it's allowing you to lock your SWE up, mint a stable coin, and that's what you're paying the interest for. Each of them have their own different rates, etc. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to zone in on HA SWE and I'm going to show you how you can mint buck and then some cool stuff you can do to generate yield and how you qualify for this APR, which you can't actually get all that 100% APR, but you can get 60, 70 if you want to play it really safe. The first thing before you go doing anything in here uh, is you need this variant of state SWE, which is Haydel. So I'm going to launch the app and I'm going to connect my wallet and you can just follow along. So what this is, is you're staking it, but you're getting a representation of your stake in HA SWE. So your assets are staked in the background and you can then use the token still to partake in DeFi and other activities. So Let's see over here, I've got my wallet, I've thrown some SWE in there. I'm going to um, stake with them, uh, let's say 400 SWE. Uh, and now one cool thing about this while I'm here, I might as well show you. So you can do automated, which will automatically pick a validator. But if you had a mal validator in mind, you can go on manual and choose a validator and uh, pick one that you feel like I'll, I'll go and pick manually Studio Mari and I'm going to stake my SWE there. So now it gets, I still have my LST, so HA SWE, but in the background that SWE is allocated to Studio Mario, which is great because I know they're doing a fair bit in the SWE ecosystem. So I'm going to hit no thanks. That's it. You are staked. If you give it a moment or even refresh, you'll notice and straight away things are changed. Great. So let's head back to the bucket protocol. Now I've given you an overview 
Now you'll notice a whole bunch of other things that I didn't zone in on before. I will, as I work through the process, then we'll hit each category and talk about it. So I'm going to connect my wallet. Now, depending on the wallet you have, uh, I've got Ethos. Uh, recently, I've been using the Sui wallet, which has been great as well, but I decided to stick to this wallet. But the interactions approve sign should be the same. So great. Now you come to the market. I said I'm going to do it with HA Sui. And here you go. So uh, I have 390. Now, you did notice I put 400, but it, the the ratio is a little bit different. I haven't ended up with less Sui. All of oh, that 390 if unstaked will give me 400 sweet that's how it works so i'm going to put a uh, 300 over here okay now when the next step you put in so you're going to give the protocol 300 sw ha sui and it is the next part is you have to mint buck now you can click if you hover over here it will set the ratio to 120 uh collateral uh, or 180 now if you do auto this is how much it's recommending to be safe and you can see over here your collateralized ratio so basically you're over collateralized 180 percent your debt uh, is this is how much i'm borrowing liquidation price so what this means is and very important you're taking out a loan you're minting a stable coin there is a liquidation price so if sui falls like if i hold on to this 197 dollars and sui falls below 72 cents my entire collateral piece will get liquidated to pay off the debt that i owe the protocol so this is where you need to be safe make sure you are very careful you know have a low ratio don't pull this up to very close to the current market price because before recording this, Sui was trading at $1.60 and it, it wicked down to $0.88. Cents. People got liquidated. you got to be safe. So make sure you you understand what this means. You can play with this. So for example, like if you want a lower liquidation, I could either drop the amount of buck I mint or I could add more here and lower it. So these are ways you can play with it. But in the interest of this uh, tutorial, I'm actually going to drop it. I, I don't want it that high. Uh, and I'm going to come back to it because I want to I want to show you how what this APR means up here as well. So 100, I'm going to mint buck. Let's do it. OK, great. So now what am I looking at? Straight away, you can see from dashboard, it's moved to position. This is the current position I have. I have this much buck and my liquidation price is here. Now, on the 300 SWE, HA SWE that I've put in, I'm earning 35% APR. Remember, over here, it was 113. So the way this APR works, this initial APR, now coming back to this dashboard, I'll go to the position not to confuse. The way this APR works is it, you earn it based on how much you borrowed, right? So if I increase this now, and for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to uh, over here and I can borrow, like I'll just borrow 25. What you'll notice, this ratio, uh, you notice my liquidation price, everything's changed. Uh, so these are things you need to keep an eye on. But again, I'm going to borrow, I'd pay a small 0.5 percent fee on this then it just gets added on i'm going to approve this you notice straight away as i've borrowed more um, i'm earning a higher apr so that's how this reward works so now if you're chasing yield over here what what you need to be careful is the higher you pull obviously your liquidation i've made i've made this over and over again because it is a big deal so so play it safe like 40 percent 50 percent 60 percent is pretty good don't chase that 100 percent be happy with the 60% or something you, you would leverage up to. Uh, so that is that how this APR works. Now, if I go to the dashboard, you'll straight away notice the dashboard shows me everything going on in the protocol, which you'll start to see it expand more and more as I start playing with stuff. So at the moment, we know there's that APR, which starts counting as a borrow reward, uh, and it slowly keeps clicking up over here. Okay, so what, what's the next thing I can do? Right, let's go to the next screen, position. So this is currently this position I have. Now, I can create a new position, and this is really important. What you'll notice is I can create, 
use other tokens and create new uh, positions and mint buck with it. But I cannot take the HA SWE token and open a new position. It would have to add to the HA SWE token, right? So over here, I have some SWE in my wallet. I could open up with SWE or keep moving along with all the all the different ver options here. But you'll notice I don't have HA. That's, that's something to remember there. So that's positions. So anytime you have multiple positions, it will show it here. Tank pools. This is something to know and understand what this basically in a nutshell is. I gave you an example of making sure you're over collateralized. You know, you saw me explain about the uh, liquidation price. Now, in an event, say you have gone and borrowed a fair bit and your liquidation price is 80 cents and the market starts to tumble and you don't get back in time. What happens is there's someone eventually that will buy that bad debt. That's how, that's why you get liquidated because there's a buyer on the other side. And what the tank pools is, is it allows you or anyone else to deposit some buck into the different positions. So at the moment, if I were to deposit buck into HA SWE, in an event where liquidations start to happen, these tanks will, the, this money would go and buy that SWE at a cheap or the HA SWE or whatever collateral you put your bucks against it would buy up at a cheaper rate. And that, that's what you can do with these tank pools. Now, according to the docs, if you park your tank in one of these, you earn uh, their token. Although I haven't been able to find much about the token. And personally, I haven't gone down that path. Um, I've used Buck in another yield bearing scenario, which I'll show you now. But that's how this works. See, you can see the 125 Buck that I have. I could put 10 here and it would just count. Now, this is 278% APR. It tells you every Monday the APR is calculated. Now, this could go to zero if there's been no liquidation. So if, if there have been some real stable weeks in price, you probably won't earn much on your buck here. But in an event, there is a lot of volatility that you could really snap up some bargains. I mean, if, if these liquidations happen at 88 cents and market um, bounce back to $1.20, you know, that, that's a solid profit right there. So that's a bit about tanks. The fountain is basically giving you some yield bearing opportunities uh, where you can earn additional yield with your buck token. And here is what I have done personally. I'm going to now take my buck token and add it to the LP, an LP, because at the moment, part of this um, fountain, I am getting uh, an extra APR for adding to this LP. And because it's a stable LP, it's uh, no risk. Why? Because if I need to pay back my loan, remove the LP uh, and then take my stable coin buck and pay back the debt so that I would either um, pay back completely so I'm at no risk of liquidation or to lower my debt, whatever the need may be for me at the time. So I'm going to add this to Cetus. I'm going to add, I'm going to hit this. I'm going to take 100 here. And I'm going to add the liquidity. Now, you would have noticed over here, instead of the dual liquidity that I just did, uh, I only added the buck coin uh, to. So if I add here, I added it over here instead of splitting it. So there's USDC or USDC plus buck. But you notice I just put the 100 buck in. I didn't have to go swap it for USDC. Now, a call out here is for Cetus, it does this automatically for you. OK, for uh, Aftermath, no. Well, I was facing all kinds of errors and I'm guessing it is because I didn't have the two equal sides. So uh, I haven't tested it further. I know by having the two equal size sides, I've got it to work on Aftermath instantly. Um, but uh, when you have the one side, what this does is automatically, as you can see, it splits it and adds it. And now I am earning 55% APR on my 100 buck, which is now split into buck and USDC. And if we head back to the dashboard, now suddenly we'll have a whole bunch of new rewards. So we've got the fountain, we've got the borrow rate. And if you scroll down, this is this is an aggregated view. And then you can see in the positions, I have this and I have this. Great. And if I had a tank deposit, which you know what, let's just go here and I'm going to feel, oh yes, I, I want to, I want to buy, get some of this and I'm going to deposit. I'm going to take 10 of my buck and I'm going to deposit into this, which I covered earlier, what the tank portion is. Great. Now come back to the dashboard and straight away you'll see, bam. Uh, I, I'm not earning anything here because as I said, if, when, and if the liquidations happen, that's when you start to make that buck gets used to buy those uh, liquidated positions. 
if the peg breaks or things like that happen where buck goes above a dollar or under a dollar there's various ways to arbit back and this is one of them where you're able to take usdc and mint it so if buck was you know higher um in value you would take usdc mint one usdc will mint you close to one buck and then you'd go sell it to lower it and then reverse you would do it in reverse if, if it, it depegged and there's a few other factors in place that you need to keep in mind integration so here you can see very uh, everywhere it's integrated where you can use buck right so uh, there's quite a few options uh, there was uh, this starter now this is like a vault strategy like for different strategies in terms of earning yield closely reviewed they, they do have one for buck uh i, I looked through it uh, at the moment and one of its processes was going through navi borrowing uh, depositing and borrowing but the borrowing rates aren't rewarded as heavily anymore on Nava. so uh it may not be on navi sorry it may not be the best path for for the strategy anymore so definitely uh cross check things if you're going to use some of these vault optimized uh, protocols but it's definitely a cool one to see on SWE as well and finally bridges so this is where then it allows you to transfer from a central exchange or wormhole it's uh, usually they have or majority of the SWE protocols have that integrated so that's the tutorial that is the bucket protocol if you have questions, please fire them away. I, I tend to try and answer every question that comes through in the on YouTube. If uh, there's any content you want me to make, let me know. Been a bit slow these days, but but while I'll, I'll find traction and start getting them out. There's a lot happening in the SWE ecosystem, and I'm going to zone in a little bit there and, and cover a few just step-by-step -step tutorials of different protocols. Uh, so like, share, subscribe, and uh, as always, thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.